morning everyone this is Shelly from hodgepodge Hoosiers. today i'm going to show you how I'm, i make italian herb bread and probably shipwreck stew something my mom made when i was young and it's just been handed down to me so i'm going to turn you around and show you how i get the bread started and then we'll get on to the shipwreck stew give me just a second okay first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a cup and one third of warm water in my stand mixer bowl and then we're going to put make sure my i'm right on this before i tell you two and one quarter teaspoons of yeast one two And then we're gonna get one tablespoon of brown sugar. And then we're gonna let that set until it gets foamy at least that you know that it's starting to activate. So I can get my other ingredients here ready and then we'll be back when it's foamy. Okay, it's starting to foam up good enough. You don't have to wait real long. But the next step is you're gonna add one and one half teaspoons of olive oil. I usually just wing it it's not an exact thing and then you're going to add one and one half teaspoons of salt i'm using sea salt and then you're going to add one teaspoon i use mrs dash garlic and herb seasoning i just put a teaspoon in there and then we're going to add our flour. I use King Arthur all-purpose flour in here. And you're gonna add four cups. Now I'm gonna get this over to the stand mixer and then I'll set you up over there. Okay. Okay, we got it going in the mixer. We want it to pull away from the sides. And when it pulls away from the sides is then when we will start the count to five minutes it's gonna need. You want the sides to be good and clean. And if it would ever be too doughy, you want to add a tablespoon of flour at a time. Just till it comes together good. See, it's starting to come together now. And it's coming together enough now that I think I'm going to start my timer for five minutes and let it start kneading, and then we'll be back. Okay, it's done kneading. See how the sides of the bowl is good and clean. And you take it out, and I like to get it into a nice bowl and be putting all the ends on the ball, not bowl, on the bottom. And then I take my mister, it's got olive oil in it. And I drop it in like that and then I'll put the dome up. And then it's gonna raise until it's doubled. Usually takes about an hour. And then I'll show you what I do whenever that's up. 
Okay, while my bread is raising, I'm gonna get a pot of vanilla custard going. So I use a cup and a half of sugar. A cup, quarter, and a half. Okay. Two cups of milk. And we're gonna get that heating up on the stove. So I'll turn you around here where you can see the stove. Okay, you wanna put it on medium low. I usually put it on about six on my electric stove here. And you do want to stir it fairly often because you don't want it sticking. You don't want it clumping. So that's good and mixed. Okay, now it's time to add five tablespoons of cornstarch. One, two, three, four, This is not my recipe. If anybody out there watches Miss Lori off of Whipperwill Holler, this is hers. Go check out her page, it's, it's wonderful. I get a lot of good advice from her on her videos. So I make it how she does and I've never had a fail. If I can find the video where she's making this, I'll link it in the description. So anyway, you just wanna stir that. Now what do I do, just like her, a lot of people temper their egg yolks. I have got three egg yolks here mixed up. She goes ahead and adds them before it gets too hot. It is a lot better than having to temper them. And it turns out just fine. Okay, so when this starts to get going here, you'll want to stir it quite a bit. Starting to warm up now, still not getting thick. I've been fixing this pretty well every other day or every day now for a while. My husband and I is on a vanilla custard kick. After supper, this is what we'll eat, is a little bowl of vanilla custard. Once you've had this, you can't hardly eat store-bought. <clears throat> There's a whole different taste to it. from sticking you just want to keep moving it around this handy little gadget is from Rada and it does a really good job but a regular old whisk will do too I've done that too if this one would happen to be in the dishwasher and I needed one whisk is just, just fine Starting to heat up pretty good now, so it won't be long before it gets thick. All right, starting to get pretty warm now.
Sorry you hear my dishwasher in the background. Miss Lori made this. She actually was putting it in a trifle. I want to do that, but to be honest, we can't get past just eating it plain right now, but I can definitely see that in a future get-together for us, going ahead and making a trifle, because this, this custard has to be delicious in it. And her trifle was beautiful. Like I said, if I can find it, and figure out because I've not ever linked a, a video in my description I would definitely get it in there so you can go check hers out okay I can feel it getting thick now once it starts getting thick it doesn't take too long before you've got to get it off the heat getting thick. I'm going to have to stir faster. This whole process, start to finish, takes maybe 10 minutes. And it's so much better for you. You know the exact ingredients that's going in it. If you ever read the ingredients on stuff from the store, there's a lot of stuff that shouldn't be in, in pudding, custard, going good now. I'm going to shut the heat off and I'm going to turn you around here and show you what I do next. Okay, just turned you around to where I'm on the cabinet here. As you can see it's nice and thick. Now, what we want to do next is, this is a quarter cup of butter. You just put it in there. I'm going to stir it around so it'll melt. And it says, I think she, one or two teaspoons of vanilla. I always just guess. This is my home, homemade non-alcoholic vanilla. You just want to stir that till it melts all the butter. Now what I'll do is when this is melted, I'll just leave it set here for a little bit. And then I'll transfer it to a bowl. And when you put it in the bowl, after it's cooled, you'll tear you off a piece of saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you've got, and you'll lay it on top of the pudding before you put the lid on the bowl. That keeps it from having a film form on top of the vanilla pudding and keeps it creamy. So anyway, there, isn't it beautiful? And it smells wonderful. So anyway, I'm gonna let this set and cool for just a little bit, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I put the plastic on to set it in the refrigerator. Okay, it's been about, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. Then you just take plastic wrap. You just set it in there like that. You just don't want, you want it to touch the pudding so that way it don't develop a skin on it as it's chilling in the fridge. So dessert for supper tonight. Okay, here we go. It's doubled. I'd like to punch all the air out of it before I get it out of the bowl. I'll spray 
spray some olive oil on my counter. I'm going to cut it in half. I think you want to make tight rolls when you roll it up punch the end there don't have to be nothing fancy you want it in a long roll and then you're going to set it on a baking sheet with parchment paper do the same thing with the second one This is going to raise to double in size again, and then I'll show you what we do before we bake it. If you want to put plastic wrap, now it, my recipe that I had for French bread says to put a damp cloth on it. I like just using a piece of plastic wrap like that, loose. I put a damp cloth on it one time, and it stuck. So this here I don't have to worry about. And we're gonna let it raise till double, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what to do. Okay, they are beautiful. So you just slowly take the plastic wrap off. Then you take one egg and a tablespoon of water and you beat them together. And you're gonna brush them lightly all over with this egg mixture. Guard dogs are at it again. Just give them a nice, thin, good, even coat. Sophie, shh. Okay, do the other one. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, I like to take coarse kosher salt and sprinkle the top of them. Yeah. Now, as soon as the oven preheats to 375, you're gonna put them in there and they're gonna bake for 25 to 30 minutes or until they're a nice golden brown and sound hollow when you tap them. Oh, I almost forgot this. You take a very sharp knife. And you just go down, make one single slit down the center. When the oven's preheated, I'll be back. Okay, it's almost preheated. Uh, the trick to making a crusty bread is I've got a pan. 
on the rack below the one I'm going to set this on. And it's got water in it, probably a good cup. And you want that to set underneath your bread while it's baking. That's going to give you a really good crusty crust on top. So, crusty crust. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to put this in the oven. And when it comes out, I'll show you what the end result is. Okay. Just took it out of the oven. Got a good, see if you can hear that. Good hollow sound. Set here and get completely cool. That bottom smells so good. Anyway, we're gonna let them completely cool and get them sliced up, and then the pan is done for supper. So all's next is I'll be right back, and I'm gonna show you how I make shipwreck stew. Okay, we're ready to start the shipwreck stew. I got this beautiful cast iron brazer pot for Christmas from my husband. And I love it. So this recipe is handed down from my mom. I don't really use measurements because she never liked to, but I'll do my best to tell you, think what it was that she did use. And she always coated the bottom with oil. I'm using olive oil. You can probably use any kind of oil you want. She always did whatever she got on sale. And then the next thing you're going to use or do is put onions. These are onions that I froze this past winter, so I'm just going to layer them on the bottom with it. There. Okay. Next will be potatoes. Now, this is just a quart jar that I had canned of french fries this summer. It calls for diced to potatoes, and this recipe will go a little faster since these potatoes are pretty well done. You know, my mom never did really like sh going by a recipe. She she could always judge good by what she fixed by just with her eye. So she handed that down to me and she did try to write down some of her recipes for me just to give me an idea of what was in them when I first got married until I got used to cooking quite a bit. Now you, most of the time she used raw diced potatoes too. I'm just using these. I was fortunate enough to put up plenty of potatoes this year. So I'm going to hurry this recipe along by using these because they're most of the way cooked. This is a layered casserole, so you don't stir it up once you get each thing in. Now. 
Okay, so there's the potatoes. Now the next thing we're going to do is put ground beef. And just crumble it up over the top of the potatoes. This is a recipe that can easily be doubled, or if you want more potatoes, I mean, to make it go further, you could certainly do that. Okay, now, next, you're gonna put a cup of rice. I'm trying to use up all the rice that I had put up, rotating my stock. Okay, so there's about a cup in here, and this is instant rice. You can just use regular white rice, like I said. I'm using up what I had in my pantry. Actually, that looks like enough. That was probably three quarters of a cup. All right, next is the sauce that you're gonna put over it. Now you're going to put cup of water. Let me get me a measuring cup for that. And right now that's just an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. That's all that is. Okay. You want to need chili powder and salt, pepper, and Worcestershire sauce. Okay, so we're going to put this is pink Himalayan salt. Again, I apologize for the dogs. Put about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Okay, and then chili powder is a teaspoon. Mom always guessed at this. I'm gonna try. See how. Probably about a tablespoon and a half of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, just gonna mix it up really well. Make sure that rice all got covered by some liquid. Now you're gonna put this in an oven at 325 for an hour. Or until the recipe mama said, in, or until your potatoes are tender, which mine's already tender. So instead of an hour, this is probably gonna cook half an hour to 45 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it gets done. Just took it out of the oven. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, looks good. So anyway, that was easy. So I've got homemade Italian herb bread and homemade vanilla custard and shipwreck stew for supper. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is Shelly from HodgePodge Hoosiers. Subscribe, like, share, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Time to eat. Looks delicious.